local all morning. The Fox 61 Morning News starts now. Right now at 6 o'clock, 10 years later, and we continue to remember the victims of the Sandy Hook tragedy, what the Newtown community is doing to honor their memories. And snowplow drivers in high demand. How many drivers the state is looking for this winter season? And listen up, a recall alert this morning for a certain brand of baby formula. We know a lot of parents are up early with us. We will have those details as well. Mm, and good morning. Thanks so much for being with us here at 6 o'clock. I'm Mary Arias. And I'm Keith McGilvery. Nice to have you back, my Thank friend. You. Good uh, to be back. Yeah. Missed and, you. Uh, well, we are, we are here, and uh, so is the cold weather, apparently. It sure is, my goodness. Let's turn things over to Rachel Piscatelli. It mm -hmm. is freezing out there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, it's the the double layers, oh. the you know, the pants over the pants type of weather, the gloves, the hat, Kids, the scarf. Wear your jacket. Absolutely. Dress for the warmth this morning because temperatures are in the teens and twenties for most of us. And when we're talking about temperatures uh, with the winds out of the northwest, 10 to about 15 miles per hour, it's taking a chunk out of the real feel too. We're mostly clear out there this morning, so you'll see that here in the satellite and radar numbers are ranging anywhere from about 3 to 13 degrees cooler than this time yesterday. So teens and 20s for most of us, the warm spot is in the Elm City at about 27 degrees. But with those winds, it's feeling like the single digits and teens for most of us at the bus stop. It's about 18 degrees. Clear skies are expected the way home. Those temperatures climb into the upper 30s to low 40s under mostly sunny skies. So really going to be comfortable, I guess, suppose out there as we continue to see those winds out of the north about five to about 10 miles per hour over the course of the late morning, early afternoon. They may be occasionally gusting upwards of 20 this afternoon. Then for tomorrow, it's blustery and chilly upper 30s with overnight lows in the 20s. Then we are on the weather watch as we continue to look closer to Thursday night into Friday. That might pose a problem as we continue to see a wintry mix approach and maybe even some rain too. We'll detail that out for you coming up in just a bit. It is 602. Let's get a check out on the roadway. Symphony, good morning. Good morning to you. Let's go ahead and get a look at how the morning commute is shaped up so far on this Tuesday morning. Uh, like Rachel said, we are starting off with chilly temperatures, so maybe you want to get out and let your car warm up a few minutes before you head out this morning. Uh, statewide, we are looking good. A lot of green on the map. Uh, otherwise, just a lot of construction zones. The normal going on about this hour uh, at this point of the morning. Now we do want to uh, take a look at what else we are checking out this morning. Hartford drive times. Uh, everything looking good under 10 minutes to get you to where you need to go this morning. Right now we are taking a live look here in the capital city. Traffic volume pretty light right now and we are incident free in this part. Uh, checking out the Fairfield County drive times now a little bit of a slowdown on 95 South from Bridgeport to Fairfield. But otherwise it is looking good out there this morning. We'll have another update for you coming up at 630. So three this morning, we do have breaking news for you. This out of Stonington, where state police are investigating a deadly crash involving a motorcycle. This all happening 95 north between exits 91 and 92 just before midnight. The crash did close the highway as authorities investigated. It has since reopened. And as of this morning, we do not know how many people were involved or what caused that crash. Obviously, as we learn more, we will bring it to you. Tomorrow marks 10 years since the tragic shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School that killed 26 students and teachers. One Newtown church wants to give the community a space to reflect and heal, starting with a musical performance last night. Fox 61's Brooke Griffin joining us in studio with how you can participate as well. Brooke, good morning. Well, good morning. As that community of Newtown prepares to remember the children and teachers who died, many say they feel as if the shooting happened just yesterday, saying they remember exactly where they were when that news came out. On December 14th, 2012, 20 students and six teachers were killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Since then, the community has been trying to find ways to heal, and St. Rose of Lima in Newtown is offering that opportunity. Last night, the church put on a special 
special musical performance based on the idea that music can encourage peace and healing. Performers for the string quartet even came from out of state. One performer from Pennsylvania says he was desperate to do something and thought this would be a perfect time. St. Rose Monsignor Robert Weiss says he feels the community hasn't been able to move on from the tragedy because there has never been any real closure, although he is proud to say the tragedy doesn't define the community, only brought it closer together. There will also be a special mass held tomorrow evening at the church for anyone who would like to join. One woman says she is often searching for peace after that day. I remember the day that Sandy Hook happened. I was decorating my tree, and when I heard it, we just couldn't, we couldn't believe it because things don't happen in this nice, quiet town of Connecticut. This community, I think, is very special because it's not filled with anger. It's filled with sadness, and let's change things. And on the legislative side, Governor Lamont says he plans to announce a proposal next year that would close loopholes in the assault weapons ban. He says that would help prevent more senseless shootings such as this one in the future. Keith and Erica, back to you. All right, Brooke, thanks so much. And tomorrow we're honoring how far the Newtown community has come with a remembrance special. We're honoring the 26 lives taken too soon and pay tribute to their memories. Fox 61 presents Sandy Hook Strong 10 years later. That's Wednesday at 7 p.m. right here on Fox 61 and streaming on Fox 61 Plus. Right now, 606, several families of the victims in the Sandy Hook shooting filed an emergency motion in Texas on Monday against Alex Jones. How they requested that a federal bankruptcy court lift an order that is preventing the resolution of their lawsuit. It claims that the payout from their defamation case against Jones has already been put on hold twice due to bankruptcy filings from Jones and his companies. The hearing on the family's request is scheduled for Friday, just two days after the 10-year anniversary of the Sandy Hook tragedy. Now at 6, Bethel police releasing pictures of a vehicle wanted in a deadly hit and run. So take a good look at your screen if you're still kind of getting up this morning. This in connection to the crash that happened on Route 6 near Stony Hill Diner on Friday night. Officers saying it's possibly a red Honda Accord cross tour between the years 2010 and 2015. Anyone with information about this car should call the Bethel Police Department. Want to get to that uh, consumer report, that baby food uh, situation I told you about at the top of the show. The company By Heart issuing a voluntary recall of five batches of its whole nutrition infant formula. It's out of an abundance of caution here due to what the company is calling a potential for cross-contamination of certain bacteria. According to the FDA, none of the baby formula products have tested positive and no reports of illnesses or incidents have been reported. By Heart saying this is not impacting operations at its facilities in Pennsylvania and will run nonstop to restock recalled supplies. Parents at East Granby voiced their concerns at a school board meeting Monday night after a student was found with two guns at school on Friday. Staff at Algrove Elementary School found the student with the guns. No one was injured and the guns were secured by police. Well, parents told the school board that they want better safety measures and communication. I understand that the job that had to be done by the school and the police was tough. Um, I like I would have liked to have been notified sooner, but I am confident in the school. I've had great experiences with the school, the board, the teachers. A police say the guns belong to 32-year-old Kenneth Parag of East Granby, and he was arrested. He was released on $10,000 bond and is due in court next Thursday. New details this morning into a school bus crash in East Hartford. We're told the bus driver was cited by state police for failure to drive in the proper lane. That would happen on Route 15 South just after 1 p.m. yesterday. State police say 29 people were on the bus at the time. The principal of Colby Cathedral High School in Bridgeport says the students were all seniors coming back from a trip to Yukon in stores. School leaders say that the students that were taken to the hospital, they were taken just as a precaution. Some students drove up to Hartford, excuse me, some parents drove up to Hartford to pick up their kids. 
609 now and happening today we're expected to learn more about the efforts to expand access to high speed internet for families in Connecticut. The governor's office saying it will expand affordable access and says uh, funding here from the U.S. Department of Commerce through an initiative by the Biden administration to expand internet access. There will be a virtual announcement today by the governor's office that taking place at 1030 to talk more about it. A celebration is happening this morning as more than 100 members of the 103rd Airlift Wing are scheduled to return to Connecticut after being deployed. The service members are heading back to East Granby after their months long deployment to the Horn of Africa. Now, Lindsay Kane is going to be there later this morning as they come home and the National Guard is celebrating its one, excuse me, its 386th birthday. The National Guard was founded in 1636. Birthday. Wow. Yeah, and isn't that so great? You know, we are live and local all morning long. We were able to capture moments like this. So looking yes. forward to that very much coming up a little bit later on this morning.